for the entire panel. Uh, there, this time, uh, to reach to the, to the document, there was uh, participation from NGOs. Uh, my question is, how valuable were these NGOs and reflective uh, for the uh, development goals in the various countries across the cultural boundaries, ethnic, religious, etc.? And if there is any way that you can quantify it uh, to the final document, how, how can we quantify their contribution uh, to the final document? Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I think one of the things that's really exciting about this agenda is that it is owned by everyone. It wasn't just the member states. It's been the most open and transparent right to the end um, uh, process that we've ever seen, including all other groups. Civil society in particular played a big role. Um, from the number of things that we did along this process, and you'll know there are many opportunities, the Open Working Group, the group uh, that looked at the financial e experts, all had instances where we had civil society bringing in what they would sometimes say were their red flag letters. These were checklists that we used. Um, you can see that um, in, incorporated in the document, um, even as it stands today. And uh, if there were anybody in the room that was not, um, uh, in fact, was looking for us to just close this um, document yesterday, it was civil society. They were there since um, Friday night, Saturday, waiting for member states to come and do it. Um, and my walk around the room was that we got um, satisfaction from civil society, major stakeholders. Um, if you looked at the tweets that we got afterwards, I think you will find that uh, they were representative not of just um, networks and coalitions that were international, but that were grassroots, because we were getting people that were coming back to us from the country level across all regions with different issues that they had, they had brought up. Uh, the United Nations had put out also social media, so young people were involved in this right from the onset that built upon the world we want, and over 8 million people have engaged in this um, alone. So I think that, you know, we're, we're satisfied um, that they have been an integral part of the input into this document and have helped to shape it, its ambition, the fact that we've got many who hadn't been involved in this before. I think the aged and young people and parliamentarians and business in the way we have had responsible business at that has been part of that outreach. And, and I think that uh, the exciting part about it is they're already talking about implementation and they're talking about what they're going to do when they get to the country level. So I think that's a sign of really um, the way and manner in which uh, member states have left this open um, past the end. It's still going on today. Thank you. Um, the, I do want to say one thing here. Uh, having, again, witnessed the transformation of the United Nations intergovernmental system uh, over the last three years, we never had a situation where civil society could speak uh, directly to government representatives in a room during negotiations. We just never, it was just unheard of. We, you recall that in the beginning of this process, uh, during the OWG part of it, part of the reason why we got bogged down in the modalities was trying to define the engagement of NGOs, which in, indeed redefined the way in which the intergovernmental system works, and we hope forever. Um, so that's the first thing. And secondly, it was not tokenism. It was truly engaged, sometimes I would even say combative, uh, challenges that were brought to the table. And I don't know of any issue that was brought up by the NGOs that did not find itself characterized in one way or another in the outcome. I don't know of any. Mm -hmm. 